Hello and welcome to my first tutorial on respiration. So first we're going to start off with a summary of respiration. Both aerobic and anaerobic have their own chemical reactions but for starters we are going for aerobic respiration chemically anyway. So there are two different forms of respiration depending on oxygen being available or not. Most os organisms respire aerobically using oxygen and they release a large amount of energy. Obligate aerobes like yeast can respire aerobically but can also survive in the absence of oxygen which is why you can keep yeast in yeast packets for absolutely ages and they don't go off. These are called faculative air anaer anaerobes. I'll say that again. Faculative anaerobes. Some species of bacteria cannot grow in the presence of oxygen and these are called obligate anaerobes. So aerobic ana aerobic respiration has four stages glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle and the electric transport tr electron transport train or oxidative phosphorylation. If you don't know what if you can't remember what that, what that is, go back to my previous tutorial on phosphorylation. So first we'll go for definitions. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide, water and ATP. Carbon, water, carbon dioxide, water and ATP. Anaerobic reactions take place in the absence of oxygen when they produce lactate in animals and ethanol and, and carbon dioxide in yeast together with a little energy, but only a little energy. Aerobic reactions give a lot of energy. So a quick summary um, for ana anaerobic reactions you need to start off with you need glucose and then you need a free carbon molecule called pyruvate which can either be made anaerobically to make lactic acid and ethanol and CO2 but if you have oxygen you can then go on to make acetyl coenzyme sorry, with coenz acetyl coenzyme A you can make that and then once you have that coenzyme A you can stimulate the Krebs cycle to go with a series of chemical reactions to make CO2 and two hydrogens for the electron transport train in order to stimulate the electron transport chain. So when I say 2H I mean 2H plus ions. So looking at the glycolysis reaction now, it takes place in the cytoplasm. This is the initial stage of both aerobic and anaerobic reactions. The glucose molecule is first activated by phosphorylation to make it more reactive by adding two ATP molecules. Make something more reactive by adding more energy. This provides the energy to lower the activation energy for the enzyme controlled reactions. The glucose is converted to a hexose phosphate which splits into two molecules of triose phosphate. So summary here, six sugars requires Six carbon sugar requires two ATP of energy, or sixty kilojoules, if you remember from last tutorial, to make hexose phosphate, two triose phosphates, and then two hydrogens are made, two ATP are made, and it goes onto the pyruvate. So hydrogen is removed from each of the two triose phosphate molecules and transferred to NAD. It is a hydrogen acceptor molecule, forming reduced NAD. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. The two triose phosphate molecules are converted to pyruvic acid. Two of the steps transfer enough energy for the synthesis of ATP. This makes four ATP molecules. Woohoo! This is formed by a substrate level pho phosphorylation. For each molecule of glucose, four ATP molecules are made directly by substrate level pho phosphorylation. Two ATPs were used to phosphorylate the glucose molecule, therefore there is a net gain of two ATPs from each molecule of glucose. 
two molecules of reduced NAD are also produced, which could potentially be made used to produce six more molecules of ATP for the electron transport chain. So lots of chemical potential energy remains in the pyruvate molecule. If an oxygen is available, some of this energy can be released via the Krebs cycle. The energy release takes place in the mitochondria. More on that in a bit. So first we're going through definition of dehydrogenation, removal of hydrogen, decarboxylation, the removal of carbon dioxide. Two study points now. FAD replace NAD in the carrier system at point X, which is this point here, where two molecules of ATP are produced rather than three molecules. So in the Krebs cycle it's important that the four carbon molecule is regenerated to combine with our acetyl coenzyme A, otherwise the latter would accumulate. Now I'll tell you why it is important in a bit. So link reaction now, this is this particular part, go from going on to the pyruvate to make CO2, another two H two hydrogens and three ATP molecules to and then without acetyl coenzyme A, we then move on to the Krebs cycle. So link reaction pyruvic acid acid diffuses from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix. The pyruvate is decarb carboxylated. The pyruvate is also dehydrogenated and the hydrogen release is accepted by NAD to form reduced NAD again. The two carbon acetate formed then combines with coenzyme A to form acetyl coenzyme A which then enters the Krebs cycle. So, uh, so the reaction you need to remember for this is pyruvate plus NAD plus coenzyme A makes acetyl coenzyme A, which is our important molecule we need, reduced NAD and CO2. Reduced NAD is our hydrogen acceptor, so I'll write H acceptor. And finally we move on to the granddaddy of all chemical reactions that makes my brain hurt just looking at it. It is the Krebs cycle. The function of the Krebs cycle is a mean of liberating energy from carbon bonds to provide ATP and reduced NAD and FAD as well for the release of carbon dioxide. The reduced NAD and FAD deliver the hydrogen to the electron transport system in the inner mitochondrial membrane, so acting as triggers for the system. Acetyl coenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle by combining with a 4 carbon acid to form a 6 carbon compound. Then, then this, then the COA is regenerated. The six carbon compound then undergoes reactions during which the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen atoms are removed. After the acetyl fragment is broken down, the remaining four carbon residue undergoes conversion to regenerate the four carbon compound, which combines with more acetyl coenzyme A. Two of the steps involve decarboxylation, and four of the steps involve dehydrogenation. The hydrogen atoms produced are collected by two different carriers with the formation of the three molecules of reduced NAD and one molecule of reduced reduce FAD. Thus, for each turn of the cycle, the, this is the important part, the overall production is one ATP, three reduced NAD and one reduced FAD, and two molecules of carbon dioxide. So the cycle goes carbon dioxide, three ATP, another ATP, to the four carbon compound and then another two ATP in the two hydrogens at point X which I mentioned earlier and two H and three ATP here to make it to carry on with the four carbon compound and then the coenzyme A part coenzyme A is entered at this point here to make another six carbon compound and then goes round and round and for every single turn all of this, these things are made. So yeah I hope that wasn't too mind-boggling and if you have any more questions about it then please message me or go and grab the Welsh Board textbook just in case I've missed anything out
but next tutorial is on the electron transport chain.